Um, adequate notice of the meeting to be held by the Township of Ocean Board of Education on Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022 at 730 has been provided in accordance with the requirements of Chapter 231, Public Law of 1975. Notice of the meeting was posted on the bulletin board in the lobby of the Administration Building, 163 Monmouth Road, Oak Coast, New Jersey, all Ocean Township District Schools and Transportation, and the School District website on March 18th, 2022. Notice of the meeting was transmitted to the Asbury Park Press and the New Coast newspapers on March 18th, 2022. Notice of the meeting was filed with the Municipal Clerk Township of Ocean on March 18th, 2022. Can I get a roll call, Ms. Uh, Truba? Absolutely. Mrs. Beal? Here. Ms. Gilman? Here. Ms. Hayes? Here. Mr. McCarthy? Here. Mrs. McGovern? Ms. Perlamis? Here. Ms. Tallarico? Mrs. Tortorello? Here. Mr. Weinstein. Here. Yes, um, if we could all rise, we're going to do a pledge of allegiance, okay? Okay, here we go. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, well, first, how great is it to see everybody here today, huh? Holy cow, I can't remember the last time this place was packed. Hmm. Um, I can't. It's really, you can? I can't remember, <laughs> I can't. but it's great to have everybody here. So, um, first, let me give a, a little president's report. Um, so, um, a couple of things on the president's report. This is uh, budget time for us, and uh, uh, myself and uh, Jim had, I had an individual conversation with uh, our Senator uh, Gopal, and uh, uh, tried to discuss some things that he may be able to help us with or be an advocate for us on. Um, I involved Jim in that discussion as well. So we had a, a few discussions with him. Um, we also, Jim and I also met with the, uh, the deputy- I think the chief of staff. Chief, chief of staff to, the, um, to, to our new assembly people um, for the district 11. And we also talked about the idea of, uh, of different um, Things that they could be an advocate for us uh, on, and I do believe that they're trying to organize some things for uh, myself and Jim, maybe to go down to Trenton and uh, be part of some group to be an advocate for us to get some uh, to restore the funding that we had uh, had prior to uh, to all the funding that we're losing and see how to kind of make that happen. So, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we as we kind of go, um, and uh, um, we also um, just for everybody's information to, uh, today's the meeting we're going to discuss somewhat of the budget today but there will be a separate meeting uh, next week there will be a budget only discussion um, that will start um, uh, here at uh, seven o'clock and uh, we're going to discuss uh, the interests of the budget with the idea that we'll hopefully be able to have a preliminary uh, a budget uh, approved at that time to be submitted to the county and i think with that that is my um, president's report, and now we have a, uh, a student report. Are our student representatives on the line? Uh, yes, President Weinstein, we have Marilena on the line. Please go ahead. Okay, Marilena, thanks. It's all yours. Hi. Uh, can you guys hear me? Great. Hear you great. Okay. So, good evening, board members, educators, parents, and fellow students. At OTHS, many activities, sports, and clubs are back to normal and mask-free. Many students are very happy about that. Spring sports have started and off to a great start. This, Friday, this Thursday at 7 p.m. at the Intermediate School is the Girls' Varsity Club Fashion Show. Please try to attend. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Nicely done. Okay, um, so Jim, let me uh, turn it over to you for the superintendent's report. Okay, well, thank you and welcome to everyone in our crowd tonight. We're so excited, as Mr. Weinstein said, it's always fun. The most fun part of our meetings is when the public come and we get to honor um, our students. Uh, the people who we are here to 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 serve, and and we are always so proud of, of the hard work um, and, and the accomplishments of our students. We have some outstanding accomplishments this evening. So the first up is um, 
are sealed by literacy students. So what we're going to ask is uh, when you uh, get called up, if you don't mind coming over here and kind of uh, going up to our uh, step and repeat there and kind of squeeze there because we're going to take lots of big pictures of, of all of you. And it's uh, it's a wonderful thing. So and then, and I know your parents and principals and everybody want to take pictures and, and we'll get an opportunity to do that. But just to give you a little bit of background. So the sealed by literacy was created in 2016 and the cri uh, criteria for this seal requires a student to demonstrate proficiency in English by meeting the state high school graduation requirements in English, including proficiency in state ass assessments and credits, that means your classes, and proficiency in one or more foreign language other than English. Uh, the criteria permits a student to demonstrate proficiency in a language other than English through multiple methods, including nat uh, nationally or internationally recognized language proficiency tests. So the following students uh, are seniors, uh, and they have achieved uh, the necessary proficiency level in English and another world language and are qualified for the state of New Jersey seal of by literacy. And we have our, we had this year over 20 students um, uh, achieve this, which is out, uh, absolutely outstanding. Um, and just so you know, all the students will also receive a medal, certificates, and insignia that will go on their diploma, which indicates that they've uh, achieved this wonderful nice. uh, accomplishment. So it's a great thing. And most importantly, is that you have established yourself and positioned yourself um, for, for the world, because of being um, uh, speaking only one language uh, I think in this current uh, world that we live in is certainly uh, not what we should be aspiring to, right? We should all aspire to have as, to speak as many languages as possible. And so we, we, uh, we certainly uh, appreciate um, that hard work and, and your acknowledgement of that. So with that, we also have some of uh, our staff members here who helped assist um, these wonderful students in, in achieving their goals. So Mike Emick, who's the supervisor of, uh, of ELL, uh, and, we'll, uh, and, and some of the, uh, some, at least part of the time, some of the world languages. And also teacher, we have Larry Anderson is here, Dr. Regina Bassalone, Mary Corman, Kara Tevar, and Elizabeth White, the teachers who assisted with these folks to get them. So uh, I'm going to announce the students and, and the language. And not everyone could make it tonight, but we're going to announce everybody. So if you are here, uh, if you could please once again come up. And there's a, a, your principals will have certificates for you. Um, and so here we go. And, and I, 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 can, I can assure you that I've worked very hard today to try to get all of <laughs> your name pronunciations correct. Starting with my own name, first and foremost, as you can see, it's rather long. But if I mispronounce one of your names, I sincerely apologize, and I hope you will forgive me, and I hope you will correct me, because I, I should be corrected. But I, I worked with, I, I was like seven times today with Ms. Kasubo on the phone. Don't guarantee that they're correct. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> she, she gave them to me correct. I can't promise them. I mean, them. don't just you coach right. them up or when they're on the field. It's up to them. Well, right? I'm saying, <laughs> sure. say graduation means. Yes. There's a mistake. Yes. There. Right. <laughs> So say it again. Andrade. 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 Thank you. So I apologize. So the first one, I can honestly tell you, I'm sitting around going, it's Andre. It's Andre. She's like, no, it's not Andre. I'm like, well, what is it? She goes, it's Andrade. And and and, and for some reason it's a block. And I keep I I I can't say, I can't not say Andre, but I'm gonna say it correctly now. So first up, uh, in language of both English and Portuguese, Rafael Andrade. Can I get that? Next up, and once again, I'm not sure if uh, not everyone's here, so we're going to announce everyone though, and and uh, and um, you know, we're going to have them just go up up to the uh, up to the uh, step and repeat. Just go if you don't mind, just standing in front of that, and then you will be joined by your by your colleagues and parents at the end you'll have a chance to go up and take and take pictures okay so um once again uh in english and spanish andrew Araya. andrew Araya. Thank you, english and spanish erica batista lopez english and spanish isabella castello
English and Spanish Taylor Sofas. Uh, English and Haitian Creole, uh, Daphne Exume. Did I get that correct? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. I was, I was practicing them. I was, I, I wanted to say, I was, I was doing the accent wrong. Well, I can say Daphne. Daphne? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, Mr. Right. Super didn't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. <laughs> okay. Next up. Oh, I will. Absolutely. Uh, next up, English and Portuguese, uh, Kevin Fernandez Rodriguez. <laughs> Next up, English and Spanish, Monica Tatiana Gomez. English and Spanish, Stephanie Guzman Lorenzo. English and Spanish, Jessica Healy. If you want to, actually, if you want to kind of like, they can even line up this way, it's, it's fine. Yeah, it's just about okay. <laughs> yeah, it kind of works out right. Yeah, I mean, you can all like kind of go that way. You don't need to see us. You see, you can see us on the big screen. We're good. Okay, next up in uh, English and Vietnamese, Jia Han Lee. Jia Han Lee. Uh, next up in English and Spanish, Cristo Limas Ramirez. English and Spanish, Brian Miranda. In English and Haitian Creole, uh, Lucia Manaskin. In English and Spanish, Aaron Lewandowski. In English and Spanish, Julia Nunez de Silva. In English and Spanish, Anahi Perez Perez. Perez. Uh, in English and Portuguese, Lavinia Pires uh, Alvera. In English and Spanish, Sheila Pacheco. In English and Hindi, Shruti Shukla. English and Spanish, Leila Taralba Ponce. In English and Italian, also in fencing, Giovanna Euclid. Anyone thinks that fencing is not a language? It's certainly. Oh, and then Spanish and Portuguese. Oh, that's not on my list. So Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese. And fencing. And fencing. And fencing. One more. And she comes an olive It's true. Okay, great job. And English and Spanish, Alexander Vargas. And also in English and Spanish, Darwin Vargas. So congratulations to all of our sealed biometricy winners. That's wonderful. Okay,
Parents, if you uh, we can take a moment. Parents, if you want to grab some pictures of, of your kids. One second, if you don't mind. Oh, by all means, Mr. By all means. Okay. Oh, I'm very sorry. Uh, I'll stand. Here. Louise, I'm very sorry. I did not see you sitting back there. My, my apologies. So parents, if you want to come take some pictures, by all means, please do so. Your kids are saying, please hurry up. <laughs> they have to go home and learn new languages. You can go and have the board too. <laughs> Am I the only one? I think you're the only one. Like, I'd be, I'd be so upset if I had an event and I didn't take a picture. <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. Can we help you, Ms. Costello? <laughs> Really? Yeah, like, oh, I love it. That's the best. <laughs> <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Oh, there he is. <laughs> these poor, these, well, we forced these poor children. Yeah. Your dad's for, your dad's forcing. It's okay. Just getting a smile. Thank you very much. Congratulations, folks. Okay, we have a few more students. Wait, wait, wait a second. Just say, sir, sir. You want us to take a picture of you and? Uh... <laughs> Thank you. I love that hair. I know. I wish I had that hair. Me too. <laughs> Diana Ross. Oh, oh man. Or Tracy Ellis. Who's that? Chef? Did you see Jeffrey? Uh, uh, do you watch Jeffrey? I do. Okay. I don't think so. There was the final question. That was about what one person in 95 years old will have a new album with her own The people who told Diana was Tony Bennett. And everybody was saying Diana Ross. <laughs> okay, Jim, do you have okay, we have more? Uh, like we have talk? more, yes, we do. So okay. also uh we have with us uh this evening the winners of our district grade level spelling bee. And we as as we we love as impressive of all as all of our students are who come to us. If it weren't for spell check. <laughs> I probably couldn't leave the house. <laughs> so this is even more impressive. These wonderful uh, students who, who, who uh, are spelling uh, winners, spelling contests. So the district spelling bee, we have three fourth grade winners. And then there are um, a winner at the intermediate school and then two, um, a second and a third place at the intermediate school. And I can tell you, if you saw these competitions, they are fierce. I mean, they are fierce, right? Elijah, are they not fierce? <laughs> they are fierce, right? Can you spell fierce? <laughs> That's okay. You don't have to spell that. All right. So the fourth grade spelling winners, and then like I said, we have our fifth and sixth. So we have um, the our supervisors uh, are, are here this evening who oversee this program, and it's Ms. Shapiro and uh, Mr. Schwartz at the secondary level, Ms. Shapiro at the elementary level. So we thank them for all their hard work in doing that. So uh, the SPE, uh, this year the bees were held, uh, you know, in person, which was great. And they occurred in, in early February. And then from the winners of this, go on to participate in a uh, written test. Is that not correct? Um, yeah, online test yesterday. Online test yesterday. Very good. Okay. And do we know how we did yet? We don't know yet. Uh, each student found out how they did after the test. Okay. And then we find out later if any. Moved on. Outstanding. Very good. All right. So let's, uh, we're going to start with our elementary kids. Okay. And we'll go from there. So our principals have certificates. And once again, uh, do we, you can stand over there. If you want to stand up in front for the big group shot, that's perfectly fine. You can do that as well. Um, I was going to say we'd, we'd have the emblem in the back, but we don't. Okay. So at Dow Avenue, so our fourth grade winners. And I was very uh, happy to be able to go to all the competitions, but the one at, at uh, Dow Avenue, in my opinion, was, was intense. 
It was intense. I mean, it, it was drama, stress, anxiety. But at the end of the day, this young man pulled it out. And uh, Mr. Ruane's class, right? Yep. Very good. So Elijah Charles, Elijah Charles. <laughs> I don't mean to downplay the stress at Wayside and Wanamasa. It's all stress, but you know, uh, some were more intense than others. So at Wayside, um, from from Miss Doyle's Mrs. Doyle's class, Renona Baladores. And I have to say, um, Renona's mom. Are you are you mom? Okay, I don't mean yeah. So you were sitting in front of me when you were watching it. And you were, you were, you know, like you were, I think more than, than Winona, like, you know, she was like, oh, 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 ah, you know, it was very, it was really, very intense. And it was awesome. We live, we live and die with our kids, right? And that's, that's where it is. So, so congratulations to Winona. And at Wanamasa, uh, this is another one that went back and forth, right? We had multiple rounds and and, um, you know, um, it was just hard to get a winner, but ultimately one individual uh, uh, took, the, took the prize. So uh, that's Ms. from Ms. Francisco's class, and that's Cooper Wilson. Cooper. Awesome. So we're, if it's okay, we're gonna get a picture of the three of you guys over there, okay? There are you folks, all right. Okay. Yeah, get, get a little closer so, you know, pretend like you guys like each other. Okay. All right, look at me. And parents, if you want to grab a picture, by all means. Mr. Ma, how you doing? <laughs> Just checking. Just checking. Checking on all my folks. Make sure they're doing all right. <laughs> Congratulations to all the Okay, so for our intermediate school, um, we have our first place champion, second place, third place. Okay, so we're going to start with third place because we got to build up the, the, the drama. So, uh, third place at the intermediate school. Uh, from Miss Sutton-Brino's class uh, was Amir Waldman, Amir. Now our second place finalist sent me an audio recording of how to pronounce his last name. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, great. And I listened to it at about <laughs> noon. And I have no recollection of what it is. So I'm gonna try real hard and you're gonna you're gonna correct me if I'm if I'm if I if I get it incorrect, okay? So Arav Apadie? So Arav, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> And, and Arab is in Ms. Gide uh, Gideon's class, right? Great. And, uh, and in eighth grade. So just, just uh, Amir is in sixth grade and Arab is in eighth grade. And our grand champion, first place. Oh, is Vic having fun? Okay. So I'd like you Vic, to have fun. All right. So our first place champion, seventh grader and from Ms. Willem's class, Jake Polutis. And Jake, I've had a lot of practice saying your last name. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Jake. Let's go get some chairs. Okay. Okay. We can get uh, Mr. Motto, you want to get in there? Sure. Get in there, Mr. Motto. <laughs> Parents, you want to go out and take a shot? Olivia, did you run here tonight? Did you run here tonight? <laughs> you did? You're faster than the car, so you might as well. Wow. 
keep smiling. Awesome. All right, congratulations to all of our so, so everybody, everybody has to stay. Got to stay. Oh yeah, we got to. No, no, you can go. Go get out of here. <laughs> You're welcome to stay. Get out of here. You certainly don't need to stay. <laughs> okay. Go do your spelling homework. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, Jim, you want to so, you you continue that, with your... Uh, uh, that concludes my report for this evening. Yes. Okay. Um, Ms. Uh, Chuba, uh, do you have a, um, a business administrator's report? Do we want to do the budget piece yeah. here? Um, I know. Yeah. Oh, do you want to do it here? 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 Uh, I'm here. Um, well, well, we should, maybe we should do it during finance. Do it during finance? Yeah, we'll do it. You want to do it during finance? It doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, if it's more of an update, it's not going to be yeah. a real... Let's do it during, okay. let's do it during finance. Okay. okay. Um, so with that, um, Ms. Truva is going to do her, come that during finance. Um, so now we're going to go to a public comment uh, section. Um, the following are a series of motions to be read by the committee chairpersons. All motions have been discussed at a recent public work, work session. Some motions have been approved at a public work session, and the minutes of, for the approved items are posted on the district website. At this point in the meeting, we will now conduct the first of two public comment sessions. The first session will be for public comments on agenda items only. The second will be at the, at the end of the meeting and can be on any topic. Uh, would anyone from the public like to make a comment on any agenda item at this time. If you'd like to make a comment on an agenda item? Uh, feel free to take the mic and, um, uh, what is it, state state your name and address, is that right? Okay. Paul Marowitz, 14 Magnolia Court. In the bills and claims, is a settlement payment for Rampart of $84,000. What does that relate to? This was based on a project that was done back in 2016. The contractor went bankrupt, never provided the final information that he needed to. And we had to go through a settlement agreement with the architects in terms of what to settle to. So we really owed like $116,000, but because the contractor never gave us the final paperwork and everything is out of warranty right now for what their work was that they did, which I'm not sure of what everything was because the architects were handling it. That's what we settled in the amount of. There was no performance bond posted? Uh, the performance bond uh, was not posted. Is that standard practice? No. How did that happen? because it wasn't a, a big of a project. $84,000 is a big project to make. Do you have another, you have another question? Uh, we've got $43,000 in there for solutions architecture, for additional work. What's that for? That is for the HVAC project. Which school? Uh, it's gonna to be TOIS. I'm sorry. TOIS. Intermediate. Intermediate. Okay. This may be a dumb question. You've got a policy that's a student anti-hazing policy that you're going to approve tonight. Are there similar policies in case of situations with teachers hazing a student? And what would they be? Um, thanks for the question. I don't know the answer to that right now, but we can look into it. Well, can, you can answer yeah, well, I mean, certainly uh, as it relates to students, there's the anti-bullying policies and, and laws refer to staff members who may uh, bully students. So that certainly is applicable. That, that's the only thing, I mean, is there a, a, a discipline policy for teachers? It, it, it's in multiple. It's in multiple policies. I wouldn't say there's one policy that covers. Okay. The know, only reason I ask is I remember asking that question like six or seven years ago, mm -hmm. and we didn't have one. We have one now. 
have have one what relative to teachers professional staff well we have a whole series of policies related to the the you know the actions of of professional staff so there's not one policy that says don't do this don't do so this, don't do this. yeah there's multiple policies okay. um that pertain to you know sort of the do's and don'ts thank you mm -hmm. Great, thanks. Thanks for your comments. Anybody else from the um, public like to make any comment? Nope. Uh, Ms. Conway, is anybody on the line like to make a comment? President Weinstein, no, there are no commenters. Great, thanks, Ms. Conway. Um, let's move to, um, uh, to approval of minutes. Ms. Gilman. Thank you. Move to approve the meeting minutes in accordance with Board of Education Bylaw 0168, recording of board meetings for our work meeting executive session minutes on March 8th, 2022. And move to approve the meeting minutes in accordance with Board of Ed Bylaw 0168 recording of board meetings work meeting minutes from March 15th, 2022. Uh, I believe that there's a, a correction that needs to be made for March 8th or an addition. Yeah, if we could just put in that impromptu informal vote in the March 8th minutes. Taken. Yep, for, for the special ed. For the special yep. ed statistics. Thank you. Yep. I'll second. I'm sorry. Uh, was that Mr. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, I had to make a motion. Sure. Oh, okay. yeah. Ms. Steele? Yes. Ms. Gilman? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes, pending the revision. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. McGovern's absent. Ms. Carlaris? Yes. Celerico's absent. Mrs. Tortorello? Yes. Mr. Weinstein? Yes. Motion carries. Um, thank you, Irene. Um, Natalie, Financial Management and Resource Services. Okay, I have uh, 14 items this evening. 6.1, acceptance and certification of monthly financial reports. The following resolution certifies that budget balances at the end of February 2022 were adequate to pay all remaining obligations of the 21-22 school year and that account groupings required by the state have adequate balances. The board is also certifying that the independent reports of the treasurer and the business office are in agreement uh, per the below resolution. 6.2. The following motion is to transfer monies from one account in the budget to another and provide the adequate balances referred to in the first motion. Um, move for approval of the attached resolution dated February 22, covering appropriation transfers in the 21-22 General Fund 10. Said transfer shall result, in, shall result in no change in the total original appropriations as per the attached report. 6.3, move for the approval of the following paid items as listed below and attached. 6.4, move to approve the use of facilities in accordance with the attached memo dated March 22nd, 2022. 6.5, move to approve the following security drills for the month of February 22 as listed below. 6.6, move to approve an agreement with Solutions Architecture to provide a district-wide facilities evaluation in accordance with the attached proposal. 6.7, Move to approve a contracted service with Federal Processing Registry, Inc. to renew the district's unique entity ID number on an annual basis for three school years of 2022-23 to and 2023-24 to for the total cost of $999. 6.8, move to approve the 22-23 Educational Data Services Cooperative Purchasing Program at a fee of $12,575 for the supplies listed below. 6.9, move to approve the interlocal services agreement with the Township of Ocean for the rental of school buses to the Township Rec Recreation Department for use during the 2022 summer camp program in the amount of up to $4,500 based on the number of buses utilized in accordance with the attached agreement. 6.10, move to approve an agreement with Monmouth Ocean Educational Services Commission for child study team and or related services for the 22-23 school year as per the attached agreement and fee schedule. 6.11, move to approve the sale of surplus property no longer needed for public use through GovDeal's online, online auctioning. Surplus property to be sold will include retired school buses, maintenance and grounds vehicles and equipment, and outdated technology equipment. 6.12, should I read this whole thing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, 
approval for workshop travel and related expenses. Uh, recommended action, whereas a Board of Education may establish for regular district business travel as defined in NJAC 6A colon 23A-1.2, which includes attendance at regularly scheduled in-state county meetings, department or association sponsored events or in-state professional development activities for which the registration fee does not exceed $150 per employee or board member, where prior board approval shall not be required unless the annual threshold for a staff member exceeds $1,500 in a given school year, defined as July 1 through June 30, and the Board of Education established $96,050 as the maximum travel amount for the current school year 21-22 and has expended $30,161.79 as of this date. Now the Board of Education approved travel and related expense reimbursements in accordance with NJAC 6A colon 23A-7.3, a maximum expenditure of $64,550 for all staff and board members for the 22-23 school year. 6.13, move to approve an agreement with Monmouth Ocean Educational Services Commission to provide school nursing services for 22-23 school year as per the below and attached. And last but not least, move to approve an interlocal vehicle sale agreement with Hunterdon County Educational Services Commission for the period of March 21st, 22 through June 30th, 22, uh, as attached below. May I have a second? Second. Do you want to have any discussion? Yeah, does anybody want to discuss anything? Before we take a vote? Um, Ms. Treva? Yes. I just had a question uh, under the bill transfers. There were two lines in red. Any particular reason why I, they were? I just think it's the way it printed. We normally just do it with the regular. I thought you wanted to highlight them for some reason. Okay, thank you. Anybody there else? Is, there is something that I do want to discuss. So I want to um, refer everybody back to 6.12. The past two years, there's not been a lot of travel due to COVID. Um, when I look back to a more... Uh, normal year, uh, you know, 18, 19, uh, before all of this happened, we were running at a run rate of travel closer to like $75,000. So the 65,000, I might have to amend this, but I didn't want to go too high right now until we see what's going to happen for next year. Okay. So, you know, this is what I'm establishing as the base. This is critical for what we're doing within the budget. Um, we're meeting with everybody uh, now across the, um, the district to see what their plans are. Um, but I might have to amend this going forward if I do think the run rates are high. Okay. okay. Thanks for that. Okay. Did you include my Australia? No, 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 I didn't. <laughs> anybody else have a, a good joke? I mean, anybody else? Have a comment? I just have a quick comment since this was brought up in, um, in the work session. Um, perhaps maybe like the meeting right before we do this next year, can we get a comprehensive update on like nurses services from Emily SC was this, uh, you know, child study team did 17 and it was this cost. Can we do that maybe next year? Yeah, they really do try to keep it in house. Yeah. Um, uh, last year, I think was a little bit of exception because of what happened um, in the summertime. Um, but we do really do. I mean, the, the special ed team does a terrific job of trying to keep it all. But we, we cover ourselves with this because that's what we use as our shared service agreement. Okay. So between that and the nursing, um, we, we always sign those contracts so that we're ready if we need to, to reach out to Emily to see and get people. But to your point, you were just looking for a reference to what we spent. What was yeah, like a year to year reference right. yeah. whenever we have to re-up it. Yeah. Thank you. You mean for the following year? Look at what yeah. this year. I'm sure doing. I asked this last okay. year too. Um, anybody else have any? Okay, we're going to take a, a roll call. Uh, um, Ms. Beal? Yes. Ms. Gilman? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Uh, Ms. Perlamas? Yes. Ms. Tortorello? Yes. Mr. Weinstein? Yes. Oh, and so I think at this time, it's probably appropriate for you to tell okay. us where we are with the budget. You want to, Jim? You want this to be full on it? I thought we were skipping it. Sure. Well, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll tag me okay. and, then, and then I'll take it. All right. So, so last week, if you recall, we were, um, you know, in our discussions, we were um, at about 1.8 million over the 2%. 
with the idea that you know there there is a possibility that we may use have to use our bank cap, which uh, you know to get us to the two percent. Um, that was a, that was about three hundred sixty six thousand um, dollars. You know, over the last week, uh, we've done a lot of uh, additional, um, you know, just looking at the current budget, including you know, supply lines, personnel asks, uh, places where we've had, uh, we had a couple additional retirements that came to us. Um, so, and, and really looking very hard at our, at our enrollment numbers to see where we could potentially consolidate uh, staffing to enable us not to have to make an ad, um, you know, in most cases. There were some other cases where um, positions that we haven't been able to fill, you know, we kind of discussed that. We've had positions that were sort of bu were budgeted for this year that haven't been open, or excuse me, that have been open, that we haven't filled. Um, we're basically kind of saying they're going to stay on, they're going to stay unfilled. Uh, and we'll outline these, you know, in, in more detail next week. So, but these are these are some of the things um, that we've done to to be able to uh, close the gap. Um, uh, and 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 probably some other big big places is you know what we talked we talked a lot about obviously you know art funds and that those are of course the federal funds for uh, the COVID funds, and and. What we're very mindful not to put long term expenses in there because, once again, those funds are going to go away in a couple of years and then all these things would have to be added back in the budget. So, we looked at as many one time or, or you know, expenses like over the next couple of years, for example, like the Wonders expense, which was one hundred and you know, eighty thousand dollars or one hundred fifty thousand dollars. You know, that's 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 something that's going to last us three years, right? So, what we were what Tina was able to do and you know, jump in and is you know, we were able to utilize more of our capital uh surplus and our maintenance surplus to pay for some of the capital and maintenance, including more of the HVAC project to open up more money in the grant that we can put some of these expenditures like the Wonders uh, program, like some of the, the switches that we need for technology and wireless, like some of the, uh, the Chromebooks and things like that, that are more one, you know, Chromebooks are tough because we buy them every year, but, you know, got to go in and out to put more into capital reserve so that we can put more into the uh, non-reoccurring costs into the ESSER grant, which in essence gets it out of the general budget. So by doing that, we're down to about 300,000 right now. And, and we feel confident that, uh, you know, by the end of the week, we should be at a place where, um, you know, we'll be at the 2%. And we will recommend to utilize the $20,000 of bank cap, which is uh, basically up this year that will be lost this year if we don't use it. Uh, it's minimal to the overall per, uh, uh, tax levy uh, percentage. It's like 0.03. Correct. So in other words, we could be coming to you next week. Our goal would be to come to you with a, a, a like a 2.03 uh, increase in the tax levy that includes that 20,000 in bank cap. It would be silly not to use it because it really has such a very minimal impact on the overall um, on the, on the overall taxpayer compared to the 2%, and we're gonna lose it. So um, what's what's powerful about that is that by not using the, the other 346,000 this year, we have that in future years, and we anticipate we will need to use it, if not all next year, some next year, some the year before, or some the year after, because the budgets will continue to be very tight you know, moving forward. So, um, you know, that's the general sort of gist of what we've been doing to close that gap. And I think right now, you know, you, you know, when you're in a car with your kids and like the last like half hour of the trip is when they're asking, you know, when are we there? When are we there? When are we there? That has to half hour is the toughest part of the journey sometimes. Um, yeah, just go with me. Um, the final 300,000 is kind of the, is the toughest because those are some of the toughest decisions we have to make, right? But uh, so we'll be able to outline, you know, the overwhelming majority of this next week and be able to tell you exactly where it's all coming from based on from where we were. Um, but that's where we think we're, that's where we think we're going to be. Okay. Ms. Truba, do you have anything you wanted to add to this? No, that's, I mean, that's pretty much where we are. I mean, with the, with the movements that we're making and the changes that we're making to some of the personnel lines, 
What I really want to do over the next couple of days is take a look at our unique physician control roster and build the bottoms up on healthcare costs to see if I have any additional monies there. Okay, great. Because okay, we have been doing some consolidation due to enrollment and things like that. So maybe I can get further costs out of healthcare. We've also been informed by our uh, by MOESC which is uh, you know, Monetation Ed Services, who do who that, uh, who, uh, we have some of our contracted um, transportation routes with them, that we could be seeing a more extensive increase than we were anticipating. And that, that may be something, remember, this is the preliminary budget. There is still time to work on the, the final budget between now and the, and the budget presentation at the end of April. And it actually, if, if that comes to pass, it may require us to go back and look at additional things to, that we might have to cut because this MOESC transportation increase could be upwards of you know a quarter of a million dollars that we were not anticipating. So there still may be some work to do, but we do plan on coming next week with a you know slightly over two percent uh, increase. Okay, uh, Denise, do you have a question? Yes. Um... We are using some of the ESSER funds you mentioned um, for, you know, for other things. Um, so we do have enough for the HVAC project. Yeah, from the capital reserve. Okay, and so can, do you know offhand how much will be left over, if anything, after the HVAC and these things that we're- All right, so right now we have $3.4 million in our capital reserve. We're planning on using a million dollars for the HVAC and the curtain wall project. I am also recommending that if we would like to continue down the path of, of fixing the roof so that ultimately we could bring in more solar power, we should do one section of wayside, which is gonna cost you know, $450,000 based on what I'm seeing. So we have 2.4, if we use the 450, we're slightly down under $2 million remaining in our capital reserve. Okay. Thank you. Okay, if we feel comfortable with doing that. Okay, anybody have any? Sure, Ms. Hayes. I have, I have a bunch of questions. 2 million left in the capital reserve, is, is that healthy? That's good, that's Our okay. districts don't have any. Okay. So we've been trying to build, Penn's been trying to build that up over the past couple of years, and I wanna to continue to do that. Okay, so prior to this, I mean, I mean, I've been asking for more ESSER funds to use a lot of this stuff since day one. So prior to this, we had 80% of our ESSER ARP going to HVAC and 20% going to instructional or academics, whatever you want to call it, learning loss. So have we crunched the percentages yet? And do we have to resubmit our plan that we have? We always have to resubmit anytime we okay. do an adjustment. So and we've spoken to the county about all that and and... We're, we're fine with all what that. Is, so what are we looking at now? Are we, are we now infusing 40% into academics and learning loss and 60%? Of the 3.3 million, um, which is the big ESSER grant, not mm -hmm. looking at the mental health or the extended school okay. year. So of the 3.3, um, we freed up a million dollars of that. So, you know, we're still using more than $2 million for the, the HVAC, for HVAC project, but there's a million dollars that we freed up for educational programs in addition. So when we were speaking to the county office about this, you know, they're still, you know, advising not to use it for recurring costs sure. because ultimately you're just kicking that can right. for the year after to have to put those costs back in. But right now that is our best path to closure yeah because we don't want to use that. And, 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 mm -hmm. and realize these, we're not using it for like additional academic programs. Uh, yes, it's, it's using it for things we've pretty much already been doing. Right. Um, well, that was, and that's, that's, I mean, that's, you know. That was gonna be some more of my other questions. If we are courageous enough to find and move a million dollars from one spot to another spot, and we still have hardly any real new academic programs in this budget. Can we find any 
additional money to start something new well, to do that. And then we'd have to sustain that. And that's, that's well, the biggest. A week, in a week, somebody found a million dollars. Well, because we're going to capital reserve. Right. Remember, right. We're, we're, we're kind of running out of things that we could use capital reserve for that we could pull out of this out of the general budget. That's the that's the that's the rub. That's the challenge. But we still are going to have two million dollars in our capital yeah, reserve, which is you know, gosh forbid, we have a, a roof fail. Gosh forbid, know, we, have, we have to you have to maintain some of that. Aren't there some pet area. projects like? I'm completely making this up because I never saw the principal lists. If it's a thirty thousand dollar after school tutoring program or fifty thousand here and there, why can't we cherry pick a few extra academic enrichment programs? which we aren't really adding any to, why can't we take a little bit more Do you want to, answer? to improve? Well, a, I, I, would, I would feel more comfortable for Ms. Weldon to answer that question. Oh. What we're doing is we're maintaining <laughs> what we're offering. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure well, I, I, know. I think, I think, what, we, know, right. I think what we said it. is the things that we were able to, to move were things that we could cover through capital reserve. We can't we, we can't sit there and say, okay, well, let's add, um, you know, if we say we're going to add more to, you know, we're going to take more money from ESSER to do an enhancement of what we're currently doing, then that's less than that comes out of somewhere else. And then, and then if we want to maintain that, it, it's going to go away. So, you know, we, we you look at the long-term. Um, but isn't the point, know, I'm sorry to interrupt, but isn't the point of some of the ESSER funds like if we did an after school tutoring thing, okay, in three years, if we don't have the funds to do that, okay, but we just gave our students three years of after school tutoring. But we will be doing after school tutoring. We're going to be doing the after school tutoring that we've that we've always that we've done. always done. Yeah. Just tip does not take into effect all the increased learning loss. Well, but you know, this year our kids were in school. Our kids were in school this year. So at some point. <laughs> They're going to get. They're going to get caught up. You know, the, the idea that this that we. I mean, the funds. You know, are most the overwhelming majority of our kids were in school uh, this year. So, you know, what we saw in whatever learning loss we may have seen. You know, our part of our goal was to get them. You know, hopefully to to a caught up place, and then next year even more caught up, and next year even more caught up to the point where you know these things were hopefully not beyond what we've typically done will not necessarily be needed for that for that purpose you know we're, we're certainly not saying that more is bad you know but at the same time uh we had incredibly difficult challenges in finding staffing for last summer finding staffing for you know our spartan after school programs i mean there's a lot there's a lot of challenges. It's not as just, I wish it was as easy to say, let's just offer it because, um, you know, it ran this year, but we, you know, in many cases we had to beg, you know, beg people to do some of the after school programs and, and, and that really creates but a we lot didn't of outsource. challenges. <clears throat> we didn't, which is even more expensive than that. Hey, um, uh, Mr. Trevor, just on the accounting side to this, so you moved some things that you didn't realize you could use some capital expense, right? So, you know, we did have the audit recently and we had some you know asterisks on our audit mm -hmm. um i just want to make sure that you kind of felt comfortable that we worked putting the right things in the capital expense side and you know kind of allocating it in those kind of sense we weren't there weren't some things that were like tossed up in no, the air you mean in terms of the reserve yes so the reserve balances were confirmed by the auditors okay great so okay. we have that and and of course anything that's brick and mortar is allowed to be yes. put into the capital reserve what is not allowed to be put in is like the architect's cost like preparing the plans and sending them to the DOE the services, and all things like that, services, exactly. Right. So the question earlier about what is the 43,000, those are some of the preliminary architect costs on both of the projects that we could not put into either a capital reserve or into ARP that we need to fund out of our local Got it. budget. Got it, great. Thanks for, thanks for uh, saying, th thanks for checking with the auditors. Yeah, no, we, and, and by the way, just to let everybody know and feel comfortable about that, um, Laura is personally coming in next week again to take a look at everything that we're doing to make sure that we're catching up on things and not going to have repeat findings for what happened in the uh, 21, well, 2021 school year. Great, great. Okay. Thank you. Are, are there any more questions? Yeah. I have another question about the bank caps. So we're still like 300,000 shy is what you're saying? But we're not, cho we're choosing not to use the 350 bank cap. 
So yeah, the 366 we the have 366. available to us. Yes, which we were going to use a week ago. Well, we were saying there's a possibility. We okay. Yeah. So we found an extra million. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. I'm not saying. Well, I don't, know, I don't know if the word is found. I think we didn't it, find we didn't it. Find it. We, it was, did, it was, we, we rearranged. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, well, it's a, uh, if it's a it was my, if, if well, why, it's why didn't we have it to it? I would have never too. recommended doing it. Yeah. Do you, do you understand? Yeah. Like, I want, ultimately, you know, we're, we're going to be looking I, at decisions about. Well, I, I, mean, I also want to say, like, you it, know, it's not, that was, it wasn't like we walked in on Wednesday morning and said, oh, look, there's a million dollars. I mean, there's some very, very difficult decisions being made. And and things that, um, but why didn't you know, we do that two months ago? Why didn't we find the, that two months ago? Well, because some of these things we might choose not to cut necessarily right now if we didn't necessarily have to, or not fill, or what mm -hmm. have you. Um, and and so you know if, if we if we didn't have to do some of these things, we we wouldn't necessarily do them. But based on where we are, they were things that had to be. You know, we had to speed up that 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 process, and or you know maybe we anticipated cutting it a year now from now or two years from now, knowing that we're going to continue to lose state aid, mm -hmm. but we had to you know we had to push you know push that up a little bit. So that, I'm sorry, that was my question about the 300. So why are we not using that 300 then? Just because we want to save it for next year? In because the I, because if we can if we can not use it this year, and have that for us next year it's it it provides a, a little bit more of a because as we've already said next year is going to be even more difficult and and the year after that so okay. this is not um you know this isn't a you know i mean we would have seen this i think in the last couple of years if not for some of the injection of federal funds that we've been able to get plus some of the the health care uh um things the that we were able to negotiate things like that um you know, uh, circumstances of the last couple of years have, have financially at least have helped us a little bit, not to the point where it's like, you know, we're swimming in money, but mm -hmm. to the point where we have had to make as many cuts, you know, this year that's starting to run out. So, and we're, and that's going to continue to run out over the next couple of years. So we're going to be seeing, uh, you know, a little bit more, you know, pain, if you will, in, in some of the decisions we have to make. And one final question. So will we be still seeing the um, loss of classroom teachers at some of the elementary schools? Not loss of positions, but loss of classroom teachers that are being moved elsewhere. That is not changing in this new no. configuration. No, actually there's, there's, there's more. There's more, you know, more movement, more people potentially having to move buildings, more of that, so. Okay. Um, so what's going on? Did we take did we take a vote on the finance? We already did that, right? Yeah. Okay. Finance, yeah. Thank you, Natalie, for reading all that. By the way, this is this is one. Um, Irene, did you do instruction? Yes, instruction, education? education, and student activities are five action items. Seven point one: move to approve a curriculum writing request to be completed before June thirtieth, twenty twenty two, in accordance with the attached memorandum dated March eighteenth, twenty twenty two. 7.2, out-of-school suspension. Move to affirm the district's out-of-school suspension report for February 2022. 7.3, professional development. Move to approve the attached memorandum dated March 17, 2022. Staff professional development activities in accordance with district policy 6471 and NJAC 6A 23A-7. The attendance at said activities is fiscally prudent and will promote the delivery of instruction and or will further the efficient operation of the district. Reimbursement for travel and related expenses shall be according to the Department of the Treasury guidelines and NJOMV circular 06-02 and A-87. 7.4, move to approve the request of a Monmouth University student to fulfill her school counseling internship requirements for the 2022-2023 school year in accordance with the attached memorandum dated February 23rd, 2022. And 7.5, move to affirm receipt of the following harassment, intimidation, and bullying incident summary report for 21-22 school year. The reports were previously provided to the board by the superintendent of schools. The board has reviewed the reports and affirms the superintendent's report uh, number 13 from March 1st, 
number 14 from March 8th, and report number 15th from March 22nd, 2022. May I have a second? Second. Any, any questions from anybody? No? Okay, Ms. Ms. Beal? Yes. Ms. Gilman? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Perlamas? Yes. Ms. Tortorello? Yes. Mr. Weinstein? Uh, yes to all except 7.4. I'll recuse myself due to my affiliation with Monmouth University. Motion carries. Okay. Um, negotiations. Ms. Ms. Beal, could you read this part? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Move to approve an addendum to the memorandum of agreement between the Township of Ocean Board of Education and the Township of Ocean Education Association. The addendum includes updated salary guides for office personnel, AP, AR clerks for the 2021-2022, 2022-2023, and 2023-2024 school years. Copies are attached. During the most recent TOEA negotiations for school years 2021 through 2024, the salary guides for this group were not updated. For the past several years, there were no employees working under that guide. As of January 2022, an employee was hired under that job title. Updated guides were needed to be put in place. Can uh, we get a second? Second. Great, thanks, John. Uh, anybody have any um, things that they wanna talk about? No? Okay. Ms. Beal? Yes. Ms. Gilman? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Perlamas? Yes. Ms. Tortorello? Yes. Mr. Weinstein? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, Denise, personnel? Yes, um, I have 13 motions this evening. First, I'd like to move to approve the retirements of Barry Bloodgood, custodian one at the high school, and Dana Lewis Lee, interventionist mm -hmm. at OTES. 9.2, move to terminate employee number 8771, effective March 30th, 2022. 9.3, move to terminate employee 8618, effective March 30th, 2022. 9.4, move to approve credit reimbursement for courses completed during summer 2021 through the fall 2021. 9.5, move to approve curriculum writing to be completed by teachers on or before June 30th, 2022. 9.6, move to approve Kathleen Sage, an instructional assistant to accompany a high school student to the Career Center. 9.7, move to approve the following instructional assistants to shadow high school students, track team, and baseball members to practices and meets. 9.8, move to approve a maternity leave of absence for this uh, school year, September 1st through June 30th, 2023 for Claire Zorner, music teacher at the Intermediate School and uh, Ocean Township Elementary Schools. 9.9, .9, move to approve an unpaid family leave of absence for Joyce Solomine, instructional assistant at Wayside. 9.10, move to approve a revision to an unpaid family leave of absence for Diane Brannan, special ed teacher at the intermediate school. 9.11, move to approve an unpaid family leave of absence for Marissa Aidy, instructional assistant at OTES. 9.12, move to approve substitute teachers as listed below. And 9.13, move to approve Mary Fitzgerald and Jeff Soares as unified sports track co-coaches high school for the 2021-22 school year. Can I please have a second? Second. Ms. Truba? Ms. Beal? Yes. Ms. Gilman? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Palamas? Yes. Ms. Tortorello? Yes. Mr. Weinstein? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Um, thank you, Denise. Sure. Um, policy, um, Ms. Gilman. Yes, uh, approval of policies, move to approve the final revisions to the following policies and or regulations as listed. May I have a second? Sorry, 10.2. Move to approve the final revisions to policy 0160, board members' participation at board meetings using electronic devices as attached. Please note the originally assigned number 0160 for this policy will be changed to policy number 0155.1 in order to align with Strauss-Esme's bylaw guidelines 
0155.1 that is associated spelling error with the same policy. <laughs> Okay. Does it say spelling error? Can, uh, <laughs> my brain just. Can somebody second it? Second. Okay. And um, before we have a vote, does anybody want to have a discussion on any of these? Who wrote 10.2? Who wrote 10.2? Was that a stress estimate, like um, policy re re document? Jim, how was it? Uh, the majority of it uh, was existing policy. Um, I remember correctly, I think we, Mr. We, Weinstein, you kind of revised some of the uh, uh, we, we deleted we deleted some of the things. Basically, we deleted a lot of the things that related to devices and approved devices and things like that. So yeah, you know, we don't really go around and approve devices. And so there was a lot of discussion around that that we decided to clean up. So the policy committee met on that one on on ten point no. one and ten point two. No, it's not. Committee of the whole. It's a committee of the whole. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about this? Yeah, John. I only had a question about the um, political policy for teachers or, uh, regarding teaching staff. Mm -hmm. I just need uh, the portion clarified that they can be entitled to time off from district duties without loss of pay if they are a member of the center of the Gen General Assembly. Mm -hmm. So that does that, do I read that to mean that they could not attend classes that they're paid to attend? Yeah, it's my understanding if there's like a vote or something that they have to go to to uh, Trenton, uh, you know, perform their duties in that capacity that, that they could uh, be afforded, you know, professional time or something like that. But, uh, you know, that's, that's mm -hmm. I mean, I can tell you that in our district, that's not, at least at this time, applicable. That's, it just doesn't mean, mean it could, it doesn't mean it wouldn't be in, in the future, <clears throat> not right now. Okay. <laughs> Giving you some ideas there, Mr. McCarty? No. <laughs> or when I'm president. But that shouldn't preclude any teacher from wanting to run for office, States. right? Any other uh, comments about any of the policies in 10.1 or 10.2? No? Okay. Ms. Uh, Truba? Absolutely. Um, Mrs. Beal? 10.1, yes. 10.2, no. Ms. Gilman. Yes to both. Ms. Hayes. 10.1, yes. 10.2, no. Mr. McCarthy. Yes to both. Ms. Perlamas. Yes. Ms. Tortorello. Yes. Mr. Weinstein. Yes. OK. Um, thank you, Irene. Welcome. Um, any old business we want to discuss today? Yes. Um, so I think we have all of the photos of the board and the bios done. So can we like get this, um, I guess, formalized? Make a motion, Just, prove it. Let's have it up on the site in the next two weeks. So is that a, a good? I can't imagine it takes Is that a good date? So imagine. do I just send everything to my call and then CC the three of you or something? No, you should send everything to Tina. So send Tina? it to me and I'll get it to my team. We'll have it up in two weeks. Okay. Our next, I mean, I know we have a special meeting. Mary Ann, you heard that, right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> just a minute, who was the last holdout for the last? Ooh. <laughs> this team. I mean, I looked at you, but I didn't, I wasn't at like the point. Um, Okay, and then my, I think my second question, um, last meeting you talked about, is it the CJ, CNJ Pride or whatever that, um, uh, diversity, in, diversity in Education Hiring Association, as you saw, I sent you the thing about the job fair tomorrow. Are we participating in that tomorrow? And did you decide any more about joining that organization? Uh, we're not participating tomorrow, because as I said a couple of weeks ago, we have to be a member of that. Mm -hmm. It's too late to be a member of it for this year. So, so we are looking at it for next year, but, you know, with all the, with, you know, <laughs> with the budget discussions, you know, $2,000, I, 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 I have not been able to reach out to anyone. I'm, I'm actually seeing all, many of my colleagues who, some of whom are part of that on Thursday, 
and I planned on having some conversations with them on Thursday about their membership in the organization and what it provides them for their $2,000 more than participation in, in the job fair. So, um, so you'll come back with a recommendation? So yeah, I mean, if we think it's something, but I mean, right now too, you know, that, uh, but you know, sometimes it's hard. I mean, it's certainly, if, if you if you get something for the $2,000, that's great. And we would have to weigh that out versus, um, you know, some of the cuts we're making and, and, and realize, you know, we're making some cuts, but then, you know, joining, joining this organization. Um, so, you know, with hopefully within a short period of time, I'll, I'll have more information on that. And be able to but one of our board goals is to recruit more minority staff members, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else for old business? Yes, John. Um, now that we've met with all district representation, it sounds like, um, regarding the budget and things like that, are we receiving any information from, from them on what is going to be happening in the future with S2 districts? I know that you've said that in your report, but um, we didn't receive any specifics, and I'm very curious to hear about if anything is being done to yeah. provide some sort of well, leniency as well, to what's going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so in our conversations with um, the Senator Gopal and that and the assemblies is there is there is a, a they're trying to figure out what the strategy is on how to advocate for the s2 um districts in their environment in their region right so we're, we're trying to actually think about how to be part of that um and just to one so one thing that we may want to do which i like everybody to think about and if I had, if we had a show of hands and we were up to it, that would that would be cool too. So we did uh, to kind of be part of this. We've also, with myself and Jim, I guess we're probably going to be going to some event in Trenton to be advocates for our, our district. One thing we could decide to do is craft a resolution that basically states our that states that we like our funding to be looked at and be reconsidered and. Um, figure out how to craft a resolution that our board sends. Now, I don't know if the resolution doesn't necessarily mean much because I think everybody's going to want to say they want money, um, but it may be at least symbolic to the fact that we're going and we're saying that we're going to write this and, you know, we send it to different legislators and making sure they understood our position. So we could decide to do that. Um, I'm not sure if it has a big impact, but it, at least it at least it says we're doing something. Mm. Yes. Um, are the rest of us allowed to go to Trenton and participate? I'm not know? sure. I mean, we. I'm not sure. We have to talk um, to them on what they're trying well, to I mean, corral. In, in the in the past, I I've gone um, myself um, with other superintendents, and that was when that was. I mean, that was the last time I've gone. Uh, Jen Beck was was the center, so it's it's been a few years. Um, but, you know, districts have put together caravans of students and all those things. You know, we haven't done that. I've, you know. Can I, can I just, can I, they're, they're, the, I think the legislators are trying to figure out what to do. And I think that they're trying to figure out what our participation is. So when I find out what the context of what that is, um, I'll, can I get back to everybody and kind of tell them yeah. What's, yeah. Uh, what's, what's kind of going on, you know. Um, you could go as Jeff Weinstein, though, if it's only. Uh... <laughs> I have more hair than you. That was <laughs> Take people time, though. I would like to file a hip report on the basis of follically <laughs> challenged but individuals. I, but I'll get, I'll get back. I'm going to make sure I get back to everybody. <laughs> but it just on a. Or was that just conflict? Can just, we that just on a show of hands, who, who, would be, who, would, who would be interested in us crafting a formal resolution stating that we're interested in that? Yes. One, two. Don't we have that already, though? What? Don't we have that resolution when the S two was around? And that was a that was us trying to be part of a consortium to um, to protest it, but then we okay, backed so out. We backed out of that consortium. We backed out of the former one. So it was more that we were so we're say doing something. Wait, right just wrong. kidding. Right, Take us back. Okay. okay. So I think yeah. So I, I think we'll back. we'll try to dr draft something up. I'm sure um, there's other districts that have it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, and we'll do it. We'll see if we can have that be approved for our. Um, I think for the. We could do it next. Week. We could do it for next week for the budget meeting. So that way, when we submit the budget preliminary budget to the the county superintendent, we could have this kind of 
I mean, one of the, uh, if, can I jump in? Sure, okay. So one of the challenges too is that a lot of the budget hearings haven't even taken place yet. You know, so there's there's going to be um, testimony in front of um, in front of the uh, legislature on the budget. So that's one of the things that I think some of the groups are trying to do in that advocacy is getting people to go down and testify as to how budget cuts are hurting their districts and hurting their, their students. So that's what we're kind of waiting on to see if, if that's going to be. And John, thanks for bringing up the topic because I was didn't know if it was old business or new business, but since you brought it up, threw it in for the old business. Thanks. Nice. Okay. Um, anybody else have anything they want to talk about in old business? I have two old business things. <laughs> two left, I swear. Two old and one new. Okay. Um, Old business, the strategic council, uh, strategic sessions, the three you know, sessions, we have two left. Um, I spoke to some members of the council, um, town council, and they had not been invited, they said. Um, I think they should be a part of our strategic sessions and it might carry more weight, you know, if the board as a whole invites them and perhaps the superintendent, I mean, it's their town. They do tax stuff too. So I think it would be um, professional courtesy, but also we should kind of have some of their input in the next two. So there's that comment. Um, and then my second comment is, and I brought this up earlier in old, I'm sorry, in the work session about, will, will we still have time to play with whatever we decide um, before we submit the final thing to the public in April for our budget? Um, one of our, uh, board, you know, directives, goals for the year is to consider consider what to do with this building, for example, on this land. So, I mean, I hope we can have some meaningful discussions actually on the calendar before April um, to see if if it's worth like what's worthy of revisiting. Is it worthy getting, you know, some kind of um, what's it called comps or some kind of estimate? You know, just randomly spoke to my friend who's local and is into commercial real estate and they think $4 million for this land and building is like a walk in the park. It could probably go more when we're getting a million dollar homes across the street. So are we ever going to truly look at selling this building and land? Well, I think we discussed that. Um, who's, who's in charge of um, Amy? Amy right? right, so we, we discussed that in the last um, meeting, I think that, that I, I basically said, you know, Amy, you have to figure out when you want to have that start those discussions. I don't think, I mean, that's, but why? that's a lot of, I mean, I don't think, I don't think we're going to get there by, by uh, the time we have to approve. And I'm confused. Budget. Sometimes we say committees don't meet. And then sometimes we're, so now we're saying, wait, we want, now we want the land, the construction committee to meet on their own? No, I wanted her to start bringing it up on when we were going to discuss it, so she could tell me when we're ready to start discussing it. I mean, I, I mean, I guess as far as, uh, in a, I guess as far as a process, we can decide that we put it up in our workshop discussion. Um, not, not obviously next meeting, but the weekend after, and we can say what we want to do and what our plan is or our plan or. Or the process that we want to go through. So, I mean, um, does anyone else think? And just, we and just, and just to be, it? just to be, just to be fair on this, uh, just to be open about this, I have received a lot of emails from realtors about what our. Oh, so what, I know that. Yeah, I get, I've, right, I've received a lot of emails from our realtors, and and there are realtors that, you know, are making claims that you know, um, they have the inside track, and they're you sure. know things are going to be sold soon, and all those kind of stuff. And my 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 basic answer is that. Um, it's a process that the board's going to go through to figure this out. We haven't even started our discussions and uh, copying Ms. Truba and saying that uh, when that process does start, Ms. Truba, if we decide to go in any direction that might involve you, Ms. Truba will notify you. So I'm going to, because we're not figuring out what we're doing or not doing, or there's no, hasn't been a discussion about it. So, so my suggestion would be that the next time we meet, we put that on the agenda as a discussion topic. I don't, when do we meet after the 29th? The 5th. That we talk about it on the 5th and start getting a discussion around a uh, process that we want to go through to even determine if we even want to entertain that or and get Jeff, just to let you know, I did thing. reach out to the realtor. We, we literally had a, a, somebody, the 
cold called and said, oh, I have a, a client that's interested. Yeah, in sure. This. Anybody I know Chris out, gets that. I reached out and they never contacted me back. Yeah. Because I said, I need specifics in order to be able to discuss this with the board. I mean, uh, but not even that. It's 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 more. I mean, what's not what's not what's not let's not get our cart before the horse here, right? Yeah, we have to have a discussion first if we even want to figure out if we want to do something with this mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. and then if we do, we want to figure out what the process is to actually determine what the feasibility is and what it would mean if we did do it. And so there's a lot of discussions. No, I, I agree, right? but so, I, you yeah, know, like, it's a two, it's like it's a two -fold thing. It's what you, know. Know. What you yeah. do with this, and then where do we go? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. All the other extra room. It was our planning and construction when we talked about this in 2019, and the right. issues that halted the discussions at that time had to do with where we would move the equipment. Even if we can move the offices, where would all of the equipment that's stored out that, right. where would that go? And that was what halted yeah. us. And to answer your committee question, it was very much like negotiations or policy where we met with other parties as a committee and then brought that back each Tuesday to say, here's where we are in the process. And then at some point, this board decided we were at the point where we couldn't, we were at a standstill because we had no place to put the equipment. And I don't think that that's changed but I am in favor of revisiting the conversation. Well, right. Sure. The, 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 and we've had appraisals done as well. And, you know, the, but not, I mean, not this year. No, what, I'm, what I was about to say was, is that, you know, obviously the market has changed such where the pricing could open up other options as to where the equipment right. can yeah. right. Make a little sliver. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so it'll be on the agenda on the 5th is what we're saying. Yeah, could you, the could first you discussions. What was the second part? The first discussions will be on the fifth. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So, Mr. Chu, can you make sure that's on? Thanks. Um, okay. Any, um, John, did you have any old business? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> any new business? Only okay, one. We're going to move to. Wait, I only had one. No, no, no. you're joking. Yeah. Um, so, the House and Senate passed a bill, so now it's law that. Um, uh, so high school students can get a free day, um, an excuse day, if they attend something related to a uh, civics um, event. Are we aware of this? Are we going to, um, you know, do anything about it? It's like if they go to a rally, if they go to a something or another. I, I didn't read the whole entire thing. It just caught my attention this week. Um, yes, sure. Okay. I haven't seen anything. Uh, we would wait for direction from the department. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, so it, like I said, there's usually a lag between when this a law gets passed and how, and then how it filters down and how we're to carry it out. So, okay. I see, did you guys see anything on that? I didn't see anything on that. It's just like, that civic it's shit. Bill 1271. We'll take a look. But usually we would get, you know, we get a broadcast or something that talks about, you know, how to, how to, imp, how, how to implement it. A lot of times the legislature passes laws and then, you know, it doesn't really think about how it's going to be implemented in any way. So, or how they're going to tell you. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. so, you know, we have to wait for that quite often. Okay. Okay. Anybody else on your business? All right. We'll move to uh, uh, public comment. Anybody in the audience like to make a comment about any topic at all at this time? Okay. No. Uh, just joking. <laughs> Can you uh, state your name and address again? Wait, I want to check to see if I moved. <laughs> uh, 14 Magnolia Court, so long. Ocean, Paul Mayerwitz. Okay, great. At the end of the last strategic meeting, I spoke with a number of you about the budget. My conclusion at that time was that you were between a rock and a hard place. To have brought down the current problem to where you have it, $300,000, I think the superintendent, the BA, and the rest of the board and the staff that was involved needs to be recognized for the effort that was involved in doing that. It's unfortunate that we can only get so much out of a stone and we find ourselves in this situation. But the staff, I think, is trying to do the best that they can for both the residents and students of this township 
And I think you need recognition for that. Oh, Paul, thanks for the, thanks for the comment. And I call them both ways. And now the other way. <laughs> now the other way, yeah. <laughs> When I was on the website today, I noted that we have the one. goal sponsors. Yes. I was curious as to, in a typical year, how much that raises for the township. It, it has not been consistent. I mean, Jim, it's hard for me because the past two years, yeah, yeah, I, I, people were sponsored. I'm only asking because, for, because yeah. Paul, don't quote me on it, but the, the number of about 20,000 is kind of sticking in my head. Pre-pandemic. Actually, Pre -pandemic. I only went back one year and it was 10-5. I was going to say it's about 10 rough. to 15. It's yeah. And I'm just yeah. really questioning whether or not 10-5 is worth the space that we're giving these sponsors on that web page. That's a pittance. It's a pittance. And to give them that prominent a spot doesn't make any sense to me at all. Uh, and it's really something we should look at. These are vendors who get business from the township. And as residents of this country, citizens of this country, we often complain that the corporations are buying favor with congressmen. When we do something like this and it's $10,000, I don't see that we should be doing it. And I really would wish that the board would reconsider how we're doing gold sponsors. I mean, the township had a sponsor for the lighted digital sign outside town hall. That was something. It meant something, and they paid a lot of money for it. They paid more than these sponsors, probably. Okay, Thank, thanks for the comment on that. Uh, the other comment, and I'm assuming that's the teaching staff. Am I correct? No, the, 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 the administrative team. Oh, administrative teacher. Okay. Principals, I'll teach. central office. My hearing may be going, but half the time I think they're mumbling. I think these microphones have to be adjusted so that people can really hear you. The microphones are for the Zoom. for the Zoom session. Like nothing's projected. Nothing's nothing's projected out from it. Well, we need to find a way to resolve that problem because the public can't hear you, and that's the purpose of a public meeting. Okay, thanks. Uh, I've got a, an accounting question for Ms. Truba, but I'll hold off on doing that in public. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Paul, for your comments. Um, Anyone else like to make a comment? The softball team out here? No? no. Um, uh, Ms. Conway, do you have anybody online that would like to make a comment? Uh, yes, I do. I have Sandy Abdelaziz. Great. OK. OK. Please go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi. I just wanted to put a plug in for the band gift auction. It's this Friday night. Um, I don't know why it didn't get mentioned before, but um, that it's in the cafeteria at the high school. And I understand there's also a Wanamasa talent show in the auditorium at the high school and OTES has their follies that night. So it's gonna be a very busy night in district. Oh, but um, just wanted to mention it. And uh, it's at 6.30 in the cafeteria. If anybody wants to come, we have over 130 baskets and it's gonna be a great night. Great, thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Anybody else, Ms. Conway? No, President Weinstein, there are no further commenters. Okay. Um, with that, can I have a, um, a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Great. Have a nice night, everyone.